Welcome into the latest edition of ESPN SC. I'm Dan Thomas, joined in the studio today by Shaka Hislop and Stevie Nicol. So much to talk about from the Premier League in particular. We could have started anywhere, but we'll kick things off with the defending champions. Manchester City taking on Crystal Palace. This aside, let's not forget who went to City and won last season. And they were 2-0 up at half-time. But then a goal from Bernardo Silva, then a hat-trick from Erling Haaland. Guaranteed City the victory to continue their their unbeaten start to the season. And you take a look at the prestigious list now. The Erling Haaland joins <laughs> of Norwegian players who've scored Premier League hat-tricks. Uh, you look at some of the names, some familiar, some not so, but some we call friends. Jan Argerfjordsoff <laughs> is with us, as is Frank LeBeuf. Uh, Jan, what a moment for you not to be in England to cover this. <laughs> We can ask. <laughs> Terrible when he scores a hat trick, of course. Uh, I just want to add to that list who scored the first hat trick in the Premier League. That's the most important thing, of not course. who scored the last, last yes. of course. Yeah, being the yeah. first, obviously, the key moment of Always. it all. Yes. Uh, Erling yeah. Haaland. What's interesting, Jan, it was there, we were talking about this before. There's almost an inevitability about it that the ball's going to find him somehow in the box. Absolutely. And I think the three goals kind of summarize him because. First of all, when Erling plays, you just expect it. Uh, that is the kind of... He is the Foden thing. In for, and he said, he said in the interview after the game, I have been screaming to him in training all week to play me. And then this one, he just there. But he, he positioned himself where his percentage way of get the ball. And this one, this is pure Erling Braut Holland using his strength. People just dying around him and he makes a hat trick and he he loves to make a hat trick this boy as anybody do but but like you say dan he just make everything look so normal Shaka, this was such a fun match wasn't it it, it really was first of all we have to pay tribute to, to crystal palace as well who again um getting off to the start that that they did expose some of some of city's deficiency deficiencies from from set pieces i i still don't know how kyle walker ends up on anderson but that's a discussion i guess <laughs> For, for Pep Guardiola. Um, and they have proved themselves to be a very good team. Once they got the lead, sat back in, sat deep, back five, four in front of them, still looking a little dangerous on the counter-attack. And, and you just wondered if they could resist City long enough. But as this game went on, the more you saw the effect of Erling Haaland, and this is not just about his goals. This is about the fact that when City get the ball wide, they don't have to look for runners and intricate one-twos in the box and somebody arriving late. All they have to do is get the ball all wide to the, to the likes of Cancelo or De Bruyne or in, the, in, in today's case, uh, Foden. Clip little balls in and Erling Haaland for as much as we praise, and rightly so, his instincts in and around the box, just having that target and know that you don't have to do much special at all. I could go out wide and cross a ball and Haaland could score. Put the quality that City have at their disposal and, and you just know goals are gonna come. It felt a little hard, again, on a very good Crystal Palace team, but this is who City are, or certainly who City are now with yeah. Haaland only part. Yeah, and this is City going to another level, Stevie, where we were saying there was almost an inevitability about it, despite the fact they were two nil down. Yeah, well, I was, I was sat, I was actually watching another game. Yes. And I saw the score, and it was 2-0 at halftime. And the first thing that came to my head was, I'll take 2-2 two, two now. Right. You just, you just, you can't get past that they're going to score goals. And you can't get past that with Haaland, they're going to score even more goals. So, yeah, it's not a surprise. It's, it's really not a surprise. I'm just disappointed it wasn't 2-2. Two, two. Well, yes. Um, <laughs> you've had a couple of disappointments today, Stevie. We'll come yeah, to those. Yeah, there's another. <laughs> a, a bigger later one. On. Uh, uh, Frank, I know you were focusing on a different game, but you saw the third goal there, the hat-trick goal for Erling Haaland. From a centre-back's perspective, how do you defend against one, someone who has got so much strength and so much balance and so much control of the ball? Well, it's almost impossible. We saw the defender trying to go over or around him and couldn't get him because the guy is so huge, so massive, and uh, with a very good technique. He knows exactly what he has to do to put his body uh, between the ball and the defender and then controls the ball perfectly into the way that he where he wants to go 
and, uh, and, and put his uh, left foot inside of his left foot uh, to make sure that uh, he's going to be precise. So for defender, and unless you know, you know that Gundogan is going to give him the ball and you pace up you know, to cover a little bit even more, you, you, you're dead because it's impossible. The guy is fast, the goal is technique, the guy is huge. How do you want to cope with that? <laughs> he's an alien. <laughs> 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 but it's not easy to come to the from the Bundesliga to the Premier League, Jan. No, Farmers League. You know, uh, <laughs> Liverpool got the striker today as well. Firmino had a fantastic game. Oh, he came from Bundesliga too. Okay, and that's about time, though. <laughs> By the way, he's waited 18 yeah, months. Won, winning some trophies there, but but yeah, I'm and, just, and, I'm and just when it was needed I'm as well. All right, calm yeah. down. <laughs> <laughs> just, well, he started it. He started it. It's been a tough day. It's been a tough day for Stevie. <laughs> Ever since Arsenal came back. Yeah. We, uh, Stevie, you know, and me, and I know that we have a game on now in in Bundesliga. It's going to be so exciting, you know. Bayern didn't win the league this this week and either. But I just want to add to what Frank said. Uh, yes, 100% right what he said. But I just want to remind us with what we talked about Erling Holland all the time. The way he is kind of creating that space for himself, he kind of opened up through his runs. And then he used his strengths, his technique and his instinct to go into that room. That is what is always so impressive. And talking about coming from the Bundesliga to the Premier League, you just get a feeling those kind of players, it doesn't matter which league they will play, mm. which teams they do play. Erling Haaland will play the same way in the Premier League as he do for Norway, as he do in the Bundesliga. If he played for Real Madrid, he would do the same. This is just his way of playing football. And I must say I'm very impressed how how quick Manchester City have adjusted to him and how quick he has adjusted to them. And after the game, Pep Guardiola said it again. It's unbelievable how quick this guy and is humble and how he adjusts outside the pitch as well because I think that is the main thing for, for this uh, goal-scoring 6-4 in four now. What was interesting, of course, quite rare in the Premier League, you had quite a few of the big teams playing simultaneously. So, Frank, you were focusing on your former side, Chelsea, who are in action against Leicester. They won by two goals to one, despite the fact that Gallagher was sent off early on in this game. Raheem Sterling getting his first goals in a Chelsea shirt, both of them to give them the three points. How would you sum up this performance from Chelsea, Frank? It's a big performance because, as you said, they played 10 against uh, 11 for an hour. And that, that's, I think the, the word of the, of the weekend for the big teams was resilience. Uh, it happened for Manchester City, it happened for Chelsea, despite, you know, that you have maybe the score against you or maybe that you, you, you play 10 against 11, you never give up. You believe on what you have to do. You keep on the tactic that the coach gave, gave to you, and it works. And, uh, and Sterling could have scored an hat trick today. I found uh, Silva, Thiago Silva, fantastic today again. And, uh, and everybody was working very much to compensate the fact that Gallagher was sent off. And um, it's never easy, even if Leicester is not the Leicester that we used to know. When you play 10 against 11 after, and you lose the player after 28 minutes, you feel, especially Chelsea from the past year, that they would never get the three points. And they did. They worked hard. They pressed. They kept on pressing. Tuchel had a very good idea of playing at three at the back to, to fill up the, the, the middle of the park. Everything worked well with, again, the resilience of the player, believing that it could, it could get a good result. I know you both watch Chelsea as well, boys. I'll tell you what, Thiago Silva, if he hadn't played today, they would have lost this game. As much as they were the better side. And they were absolutely cruising at 2-0. And then Mendy threw one, he got beaten at his near post from Barnes. And as you can imagine, you've got 10 men, the opposition are coming after you. So for the last, what, 20-odd minutes, yeah. they, they absolutely threw everything at Chelsea. And Thiago Silva in those 20 minutes must have cut out th at least three or four crosses... Uh, and, and opportunities that Leicester had in that small period of time in his own. He was absolutely brilliant. Yes, Sterling got the two goals, could have had the three, but without Silva, they don't win this game today. It was more about the result than the performance today, wasn't it? For, for Chelsea, after that yeah. defeat against Leeds, they uh, didn't blow you away. They, 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 had to, they had to get the result, and, and, that, and that's without question. But at the same time, you saw some of, some of Chelsea's issues. And yesterday when I was speaking about Leicester, I said I was, I was genuinely worried about them. Um, and, and this 90 minutes 
didn't do any anything to, to address that. Chelsea got a little fortunate with the deflection for the goal from Raheem Sterling. Even more so earlier on at nil-nil, Barnes had a goal disallowed that I thought Mendy was a little bit fortunate to get, get the benefit of, of that call for. Um, and then I felt a little sorry for Gallagher with his red card. He was left exposed by Cucurella and, and two poor balls in. But then even with 10 men, and, and this is my issue with Leicester City and why I'm, I'm struggling as to how I feel about this as far as Chelsea are, are concerned, is even with 10 men, Cucurella and Raheem Sterling were picking the ball up in 10 yards of space every single time. Right. I, I, I honestly can't understand how, how Leicester, with a man advantage, seemed to be so at sea. And so, while from a Chelsea perspective, yes, you get the result, absolutely fantastic, you needed that. Um, because of who it was against, I'm not sure that it addresses many of your issues. From a Chelsea perspective, Frank, is this going to be the catalyst for them to go out and pay that extra money for Aubameyang? Because you still feel like they need someone who's going to get the goals. <laughs> I don't know if it would be for Aubameyang, but um, well, I, I've been heard that they want to buy, you know, a, a central defender for lots of money. It could be history in the yeah, Premier League. Yeah, we know that Fofana is going to happen at the back, don't know. we? Fofana is going to happen. That's pretty much yeah. signed and sealed. But there's what five days to go to the window closes. Yeah. Do they need to go out and get a striker? Yes, I would never change my uh, my opinion on that. You know, I, even if Sterling did well today, I really think that he need a, a killer. You know, when I see Erling Haaland uh, performing the way he performs, and I see the money that uh, Chelsea has, I wonder why they didn't try to chase him. Uh, maybe it was a done deal between Erling Haaland and Manchester City because of his father pass. You know, I don't know whatever it was, but why Chelsea didn't try to get him? Because that's that's a real surprise for me. When you're ready to pay 85 million for a central defender, why didn't try to buy Alan for 100 million? And you would have got him. And uh, you would have somebody, like I said, who is an alien, would have scored like 25, 30 goals a year. I don't know why they didn't do that before. Why didn't react? Maybe because of the change of chairman, you know, uh, maybe. But the scouts should have said, you know, that there is, there is, something a priority that we have to get is a striker and the only striker we can get and we are sure well at 99 percent is going to be successful is Erling Allen. they didn't they didn't do it so now they got rid of Lukaku he's going to come back next year maybe they're going to buy Aubameyang but we know that Aubameyang is not going to score 30 goals I don't think so so you lost Lewandowski so who are you going to get yeah Aubameyang can be somebody who can do at least uh, something good, but I still, I'm still not sure it will be the right man. Elsewhere, of course, Liverpool were still in search of their first win of the season. But not Bournemouth looked like perfect opponents, and they certainly proved that way. Uh, Liverpool 9, Bournemouth well, nil is how... Expected goal 3.23. <laughs> is how it finished. Uh, Liverpool 5-0 up at okay. the break. Uh, was it the last time Liverpool won 9 0 at Anfield? Was against Crystal Palace, where was. Steve Nichol scored two well, everybody goals. Scored that, well, everybody scored that, Everybody scored. Everyone scored this day with uh. Diaz scoring uh, two as well. <laughs> how did this go? How did this game compare to the Crystal Palace game, Steve, back in 1989? Um, well, it was obviously just as easy, and, and actually, it finished nine in this game. Yeah. And it could have been more, and it could have been the same in our game as well. Um, I think you just summed it up really It was the perfect game for Liverpool They needed something to get kickstart the season yep. And Bournemouth really are Pretty much going to be cannon fodder As soon as Diaz scored after What, the third minute of the game Then you did worry Certainly didn't expect nine But just the, the perfect performance when, when they needed it uh, And can only be good for everybody And Trent Alexander-Arnold <laughs> Hmm. Your question is defending. That is some strike. Yeah, I mean, what a conundrum. What a conundrum. Because there's no question. Going forward, from the back, there's nobody better in the Premier League going down the right-hand <laughs> side. There isn't. Unfortunately, <laughs> he can't defend. But it's a conundrum for anybody. It's the same with Gareth Southgate for England. Who do you play? Yeah. 
Also, another conundrum surely got to be Nunez back from suspension. No. No? No. That's not not even an issue. He's right back in the starting eleven. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Listen, Bobby Firmino scored a couple of goals today, but don't don't be fooled. You know, he has been nowhere near his best for the last 18 months, and and he got fortunate with his first goal today. Um, second one, he took it well, but you know, scoring two goals and playing well against Bournemouth is good for him. It's a wee bit of a lift. But the truth is, Bobby Firmino, I think we've seen the best days of him. And he's going to be a guy, when Nunez is fit, right. or not fit, but not suspended, has to start ahead of uh, Firmino. Has to. Anything else you'd like to say about this game? Not really. I only saw it to 3-0. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's all expected to see. So I'm, I'm actually glad I, 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 sw I switched over to Chelsea, so I'm glad I yeah, did that. I think, I think a lot of people did that. Yeah. Eh? Uh, yeah, and just to confirm, there are no easy games in the Premier League, yes? Yeah, none. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Premier, League. Premier League. Premier League is so intense. It's so yeah. physical. It's yeah. The speed and everything. That will never happen a 9 0. No. That, but Liverpool today won 9 0 against Augsburg. That was something we surprised, not surprisingly. <laughs> uh, meanwhile. I have a question though, Dan. I have a question. Go on, uh, Frank. Stevie, can you, can, can you tell me, Stevie, do you count it as an assist, the second one from Firmino when he misses his goal? <laughs> he points and he points, and doesn't he? He points at Harvey Ellick. Yeah, I meant I that. Know, yeah. <laughs> well, it's a, bit, it's a bit the same as Nunez's assist. Right, a couple of weeks ago, yeah, yeah. when uh, when Salah scored, just complete yeah, miscontrol. I mean, yeah. Yes, <laughs> it was a lovely finish from Elliot, though. It was. He was very emotional as well when he scored, didn't he? Well, that just I think that's got something to do with the fact that he was out for so long. Dan. No, I wasn't saying in derogatory way. I'm just no. saying he was emotional. <laughs> that was it. It's twisted but against I, me. I, I, okay. I got to, I, I done got the worst thing with Dunias. I, I met him after two first games, and I said to everybody, and I tweeted. Oh, Nunez, best lad I've ever met. So open. He is so disciplined. And then the third game, <laughs> red card. See you later. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Uh, right. Uh, meanwhile, the day started at St Mary's. Manchester United taking on Southampton. Uh, United looking yeah. to continue that momentum after that impressive victory against Liverpool. Uh, Ten Hag sticking with the same 11. It paid off. Uh, they won 1-0. Just Stevie, yeah? Yes, listen, this, uh, the only criticism that have, they've had, particularly away from home, is that they've come out and been defensive and scared and not aggressive at all. At least in this game, you can say from the first whistle, they were aggressive and they were, they were at it. Yeah. Now, that doesn't mean that they were world beaters, because they certainly were far from it. Any good football that was played in this game was from United. There was little periods where they knocked the ball around well. I mean, the goal Fernandez scores is a great goal. That's a tough, that's a tough volley from right. what about 18 yards into the bottom corner. Um, they deserve to win. They were the better side, so it's it's everything they needed. They, I don't think there would be anything that they didn't show that Ten Hag would have asked for right. before the game. Yes, we all wanted teams to be Brazil in disguise, but from where they were to where they are now, desire win the game, you name it, he got what he wanted today. So, yeah. Job done, kind of job done, Frank, yeah? Without kind of pulling up any any roses. No, nothing, not, nothing much to say about that uh, that performance, except that they got the three points, and uh, as TV said, that's the most important thing. Um, for me, for me, there are two chances to score. One fantastic action where there were four saves, you know, in like seven seconds from uh, from the Saints, and that goal from uh, Bruno Fernandez. Except that nothing much to uh, to see, except uh, Ronaldo <laughs> coming out from uh, coming on the, uh, the pitch after for uh, the, the first 20 minutes, the last 20 minutes, sorry, and Casimiro, you mm -hmm. know, uh, starting like for 10 minutes. That was the only two events that I that I have to mention, otherwise, no, three points, that's it, go back home, and there will be a, a, a big test next week. Yeah, and do you want to add anything? No, I'm just saying, I think the, the, the key words are at it. You saw that against Liverpool as well. You saw it now against Southampton. They were at it. Uh, they defend better. 
that what well, that's what I do. And I think Eric Ten Hag after the Liverpool win, what he wished most was a dirty win away from home. And that, that's what he got. So that is good for, for Manchester United. But let's see. There is another week left of the transfer window. There's a lot of things can happen uh, in the, the next four or five days. Anything, Shane? No. OK, all right, then. Moving on uh, to the late game, which saw Arsenal <laughs> take on Fulham. Uh, Arsenal coming from behind to win by two goals to one. When Fulham took the lead, I was surprised I didn't get a message from a certain <laughs> scout <laughs> member uh, of our team. So you, so <laughs> you Arsenal are the only side, 100% after four games. Stevie, have Arsenal improved from last season? <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, I was so disappointed as well. Honestly, I, as soon as Mitovic scored, I was like, I can't wait to go in the day. Yeah, please, <laughs> please. But they, did, they were the better side by far. They're looking good, yeah. aren't they? And they, they they played some real good football. Back a bit they to that corner, it. Dad. Uh, no, they are no, looking they good. Are. You can't they, not admit they're no, they good did. in the moment. Uh, all the things they did today are all the things that were missing last year. Particularly so they've improved from, the first, year. from the first minute to the last. I said it before and I'll say it again. What they hadn't been doing last year is playing from the first minute to the last minute mm-hmm. at a consistently high level and putting the pressure on the opposition. They had the pressure completely for all this game on Fulham, who fortunately got a break because Gabriel made a complete mess of it. But they still had the guts and the wherewithal to come back. Now, they got a, bit, a little bit fortunate with the two goals, but they should have scored the chances that they created, which were three, a good three or four good chances that, that Leno actually did pretty well at. Yeah. But then, of course, we then found out why Leno got transferred from Arsenal because he comes out for the second goal and makes an absolute mess of it. There's no foul against them. It's just horrible goalkeeping. Uh, and Arsenal get the three points, which was thoroughly deserved. Norway dominating this Premier League, Jan. <laughs> we, we always have, Dan. We always have. Uh, but, but I think that uh, uh, some of the key to Arsenal as well is that uh, some of these young guys, they are taking more responsibility and, and we could use Martin Erdegaard as an example for that. Being the captain, a leader of the pack, a young guy that's not your typical Roy Keane kind of, of captain, but he's doing it as a, as a model. And it's, it's fun to watch Arsenal at the moment, uh, but as all Arsenal fans know, they, don't, they haven't had the best, as the, the toughest opponent so far. But it's good for the confidence. And, and let, now let's see. They, they have something to work on. But I like them. You saw the ball possession, 71-29. You could imagine that Arteta has been with Guardiola for a while. They're, they're fun to watch, aren't they, Frank? They are. They are. And again, they showed personalities today. They showed resilience, like uh, I was talking about City and uh, Chelsea. They never give up. And as Stevie again mentioned, you know, comparing to last season, um, they, they, they keep on working hard and, uh, and, they are, and, they, and they are successful about that. Um, and, and I have to join Ian about uh, Martin Odegaard. I mean, with all due respect, and we know that he's not there yet, but he makes me think a little bit of Dennis Beckham, the finesse, the class, you know, the good choices that he makes, the technique that he has. Uh, the guy makes the difference, you know. He, he had the chip during the, uh, the second half. It was a pure beauty. And it's fun to watch, yeah. It's the big, except the Gabriel mistakes, they're pretty strong at the back. Uh, everybody works hard defensively and offensively. Uh, it's a good squad. Now we have to wait. It's a big test. Well, I was talking about Manchester United and the Arsenal game next, uh, next week. We're going to see, you know, yeah. uh, how it works. And, uh, but so far, so good. Fulham does well. Um, yes, it was, uh, Fulham. Fulham does well, works hard. And, uh, is, um, and Liverpool knows that he's a very hard opponent. Oh, Stevie, next weekend, United, who you ate, against I've been Arsenal, about it you want to fail. I've been thinking about it since Frank said it. Right now, I'll, go for the, I'll take the draw. Right, but, but if you had to support one of them. Well, because I've got a bet with you, I'll go United. Wow, Stevie what? Nickel. <laughs> what? Goodness oh gracious. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, it's money, Shaka. It's money, Steve. Right, 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 right. Uh, meanwhile, midweek game for Arsenal taking on Aston Villa, uh, a side who've struggled so far in the start of the season. Uh, just three points after their opening three games at the moment. Though it's West Ham who sit bottom of the table, aren't they? They're on at zero points. They're in action, though, on Sunday. And just a reminder for more reaction to what we saw in the Premier League and beyond today, be sure to check out our YouTube channel. Go over to ESPN FC. Don't forget to subscribe. 
at that. 35 shots, 20 of them on target. <laughs> but in the end, it finishes Bayern Munich 1, Ruchin Muchin Gladbach 1. Uh, Fairly even then. Artie Rintak caught up with Thomas Muller after the game. What is it about Gladbach? They seem to be yeah. the only bogey team, <laughs> Angst Gegner, that can uh, get no, in Bayern's no, way. I, I think, uh, okay, the result, the results, I know what you mean, but uh, when you when you watch the game again, uh, I don't, anybody would say, okay, it's our Angst Gegner. We, we don't play with fear. <laughs> not, not, not at all. <laughs> not a second. Every decision, every small decision where he decided for Gladbach and no one for us. And also, I don't know, it's, Sommer had two times, 35 seconds, his ball in his hand. And I think the, the, the rule is tw 12 seconds. And sometimes you have to make a decision, a yellow card or something like that. And I think the performance of the referee wasn't that good. And instead of giving yellow card to him, to him, to him, just put your own nose and whistle in the right way for both teams the same. And today I think it was not like that. Julian, thank you very much. Now I get wahrscheinlich uh, Strafe. <laughs> He said, he said at the end in German there, now I'm probably going to get a fine. I'm glad he said fine. That's good. Um, yeah, it seems yeah. a strange thing to pick on the referee, considering that Bayern had all those chances, Jan, and obviously couldn't convert. It just happened to be one of those days and up against a Jan Sommer who was standing on his head. Yes, and it was not very charming because I watched this game and it's not like I'm thinking, oh, the referee decided the game. It was lack of uh, finishing. They and Jan Sommer. Uh, remember, this is the goalkeeper who was first linked to Manchester United. Jan Sommer, Swiss goalkeeper, but there was never a chance they will get him because he will try to be number one uh, wherever he goes. And Jan Sommer, uh, I will mean that is maybe one of the best keepers on the line in the whole world. He's fantastic on the line and one game against one. He's not the tallest goalkeeper, but he but he has games like this and it's it's unbelievable. And what Nagelsmann doesn't like, and <laughs> rightly so, because straight after the game he was asked. Do you need a number nine? What happened to Lewandowski? <laughs> and he knew what was coming. And you, you know the processes. But, but it's just funny, as, as also you said, uh, Dan, at the beginning there, in the 10 last games, Gladbach has won five, one draw and four, uh, four losses for Gladbach. So this, this is a team uh, that they have a lot of problem against uh, Bayern Munich. That's just happened in football. But today, I think Sané was fantastic. Uh, today, he could have had more goals. But I also like the winner uh, of, uh, of Gladbach with what Turan did uh, because mm. he goes one against one against Neuer. And yes, it's a big mistake of Upa Meccano. That is not breaking news, by the way. And then Turan, just before Neuer, he goes a bit left to take him over. over and then he put the ball uh, in, 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 in right for, for the striker. That was brilliant. That was not finished that after those mistakes from Ipomacano. And I'm glad for me and Stevie, we, we have an excitement again in the Bundesliga. Oh, Bayern I, won't win it. I would definitely have asked Nagelsmann <laughs> if they missed Lewandowski. <laughs> Just get him to punch me in the face. It, yeah, it, it, inevitably, we try and read things into these results. But this was just one of those days, wasn't it? Yeah, they could have won five. Uh, and uh, Bayern is... I mean, sometimes when we discuss this, Dan, and we do it often at the shows, there's a lot of people misunderstanding what we're saying. It's not Bayern Munich's fault that they're so much better than the others. That is Dortmund, Leipzig, Leverkusen being hopeless. Today they were a bit better uh, and they're all winning, but they need to be get better. I, I love this Bayern Munich team. Mane has taken the Bundesliga and Bayern with, with Stormy. Uh, well, I, I heard Shaka said I was offside. I think that is so sad that these kind of decisions are offside. But Mane has been fantastic for them. They come goals from everywhere. Uh, and I think we will have to put uh, Bayern Munich up there with the favourites for, for the Champions League. An eventful day in Serie A, some big results to discuss. Uh, let's start, shall we, with the Juventus against Roma. Always going to be the headline tie, Gab. Brilliant start from Juventus. Roma, though, getting that equaliser from Tammy Abraham in the second half. They did. Obviously, uh, it's been a rough week for, for Max Allegri. Things started so well for Juve. Dusan Vlaovic with a, with a peach of a, yeah. of, of a free kick. Um, Juve then had a, a goal disallowed, created numerous chances. Uh, like Jose Mourinho said that after the game at halftime, that he was embarrassed by their performance. Uh, but then in the second half, uh, Roma moved to a back four and uh, they got the equalized, equalizer. 
Dybala uh, setting up uh, Tammy Abraham. Dybala, of course, first game back uh, at the uh, Juventus Stadium since his tears the last time he was there. Yeah, that's the interesting thing. Dybala's return, obviously. Gab, how did he perform overall? It's funny, Mourinho said that he was great. Um, I humbly disagree. I mean, he came up huge in setting up uh, uh, Abraham for the goal, but I thought he had a, uh, he had a bit of a lackluster game. I mean, Juve, I, I can't overstate how impressive Juve were in the first 45 minutes, especially relative uh, to their performance the previous, uh, the previous week against, uh, against Sampdoria. Uh, but Roma are really, really resilient, mm. and uh, Mourinho made the tactical change uh, that they needed, got back into the game. One last thing about Roma, people were saying, oh, with all those attacking players, you know, they could be rubbish at the back. Well, they've only conceded one goal all season, and that was from a set piece. Uh, elsewhere, defending champions remain unbeaten. A comfortable 2-0 win for them, Gam? Yeah, uh, I'd say so. You know, Bologna, an incomplete team right now. They're still hoping to bring in uh, a couple players uh, before the window closes. Uh, Milan went out, went out there. Rafael Leao, Giroud. Um, you know, they got they got the job done. Uh, we finally saw Adli make his uh, make his debut. Uh, this Milan team, they they play with so much energy um, and and so much togetherness, and and they have the quality. Uh, going forward, and, and the great thing is, as I've said before, Pioli has his changers. Uh, here it was it was Salamakers coming on, it was Adley coming on. Uh, he's got a deep team, interchangeable parts in certain areas, and, uh, and he's making the most of it. Uh, meanwhile, Gab, we got you on. We got to discuss yesterday's win for Lazio. Impressive stuff against Inter. Yeah, and like, I don't even think Inter were, were terrible. I mean, they, they, they certainly, obviously, a defensive error uh, leading to the first goal. But it was more a case of, of Lazio playing great. Luis Alberto, you know, remember he was supposed to leave in the summer. He wasn't a Saudi-type player. Of course, you know, he comes on, scores uh, an absolute peach of a goal. Uh, Pedro adding the, adding the third. Uh, this Lazio side, they they have a lot of individual quality uh, with with Luis Alberto if he gets on the pitch. Obviously, Milinkovic Savic, um, and I don't want to say Inter, you know, took this a little bit lightly. Although obviously started Gagliardini instead of Shalanoglu, which raised a few eyebrows. Uh, but it was more a case that when when Lazio kicked it up several notches, Inter couldn't really respond. Uh, anything else catch your eye this weekend, Gab? So far. Uh, well, we have some some inter some big games coming up uh, uh, coming up tomorrow. We, we'll, we'll get uh, we'll get a shot at seeing uh, at seeing Napoli uh, again. Mm. Um, but really, uh, Torino they're right up there with the big boys at the top of the table for now. Very very early, um, but uh, but certainly it, it speaks to some of the moves that they made over the summer. And uh, and one last thing, Milan adding uh, some depth at the back, picking up picking up. Uh, the German under-21 international Malik Tiao from, uh, from Schalke. I think the deal is going to go through on, uh, on Monday. And uh, it adds depth and it fits what Milan try to do by picking up gifted youngsters from around Europe. Great stuff, Gab Marcotti, as always. Just a reminder then how things look at the top of the table. Of course, early doors at the moment. But uh, you have got four teams that are currently sitting on seven points apiece. AC Milan, Lazio, Roma, and as Gav mentioned, surprisingly, Torino. And they will be reunited this Monday, I'm told. The Gab and Jules podcast with the headline acts back in their respective seats. Be sure to check it out over on the website. Norwich City then with the win. That puts them up to fourth in the table. But it's your old side, Reading, Shaka. Yeah. Who say at the top. Of the, I thought you'd be more excited by that. I, I, I was very surprised. The expectation is Reading would have struggled this season. Um, but they Plenty of time to mess it up, Shaka. Well, yeah, oh, no, exactly. don't, don't Plenty say that. Plenty of time to mess it up. No, don't say that. That's what you were thinking. No, it wasn't. Uh, it, Mr. Negative. The silence made me think that. Oh, no, really? No. Yes. That's it. No, no, we'll yeah. be all right. Yeah. There was we'll quite a long period of silence yeah. when Shaka no, was processing. I, like, no. <laughs> Did you not read it? Yeah, no, I'm just... The expectation really was nothing like that. All right, and then. I was worried. So they're well, going. Go. You said they're going down. There we go. I did Much not. like this show. He Better said, than expected. No, no, really really tomorrow for more. Till then, <laughs> goodbye. Welcome into the latest edition of Extra Time. Thank you very much 
for your questions. Shaka Hislop is with us. How's your tummy now, Shaka? It's all Much right. Much better, thank Feeling you. Better. Thanks, yes. That's, that's, that's good. Uh, Stevie Nickel is with us as well. We also welcome the pro. Jan Fjortov is with us, as is Frank LeBeuf. Thank you very much, Frank. I um, reached out to Frank yesterday because I had friends going to Paris this weekend. Frank very helpfully gave them a list of places they should go, go and eat. Oh. However, one of the places was an Italian restaurant, Frank, which surely <laughs> somehow contradicts what you want when you're going to France. <laughs> Well, you know, France uh, makes more pizza than in Italy, I was told, you know, right. I wrote that, oh. <laughs> I read that, sorry, yeah, and uh, we love Italian restaurants, you know, um, we are in competition with the Italians about the best, the most beautiful women, the most, the most uh, um, handsome men, uh, the most beautiful kitchen, uh, let's say cuisine, yes. and uh, the best wines, but we can accept the fact that in Italy, uh, they have a fantastic food. <laughs> And I love to go to Italian restaurants. <laughs> it's all about cuisine, Stevie. What? what? <laughs> but if you go to Paris, he never had a Mars bar. He never had a Mars bar dipped in fat, clearly. Oh, oh, deep fried Mars bar. Deep fried, fried Mars bar. Yeah. Shepherd pie. But Dan, <laughs> wrapped down with a Dan, can of ten and you, 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 you have to admit, no, no. Forget about the shepherd's pie. We hate that and we never get to that, you know. Uh, but, uh, I, uh, Jan's light I, is about to blow. <laughs> Jan's light is about to blow. Jan's going to be in the dark in a minute. What's happening to Jan's light? <laughs> it's, it's about to I blow. Will, I will fix it. Hey, it's Saturday night. It's disco night. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh, hey. Disco hey. hey. All right. Uh, uh, we got oh, oh, there we go. Oh, right. no. All right. Uh, oh, there we go. So, Frank, I'll, I'll be back. Uh, uh, I will fix it. Okay. Right, that's good. Well, you're Look at an, this. Give us you're an electrician as well. <laughs> I'll fix it. Uh, Frank, what were you saying, sir? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, sir, just to finish the story, don't forget that I said that your friends need to go to a French brasserie. Yes. They have to go there. Yes. And I invite all people who are coming to France to go to brasseries because they're absolutely beautiful and the food is very French. You have all sorts of, uh, beautiful. of cuisine. It's, it's a great moment to go through. Beautiful. And what, what cuisine would you give uh, Stevie if he went to a French brasserie? Uh, oh my god. <laughs> I don't know. Get some bread. Get some bread, maybe that's going to be. Escargot for you. Shepherd's Pie. Uh, oh, sure. imagine it. Imagine, yeah, it was. Oh, goodness. Okay, here we go. First question. We've had a lot of these ones. How do you intend to use the $50 that Stevie's going to give you? <laughs> yes, of course. Wait, the hold on. What was he bet? I don't know what we <laughs> have to finish top four. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, so we have a long way to go yet. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. we, do, we do have a long way to go. You nervous a little bit? Mm. No chance. <laughs> <laughs> no chance. <laughs> Why not, Stephen? They're perfect. Chelsea, it's rich. Spurs, City, and Liverpool. He's a rich. There you go. There's your four ahead of them. Wow, stubborn. Mm -hmm. And there's always a little sneaky. Every mm. year, there's a wee sneaky. Is there? Usually. Not really. Usually. When? Usually. When was the last sneaky? West Ham. West Ham? Yeah. When's the last time they finished in the top West four? Two years ago. That's a, no, it was longer yeah. than that. Two years ago, sneaky. Longer than that. No, wait a minute. Hold sneaky, on. as in Arsenal being six. West Ham. <laughs> six, by the way. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. Being six, not fair. <laughs> So, so, so Arsenal's still got to deal with a wee sneaky coming okay. up, as well as the four I've given you. So do you want double or nothing? I don't want to take his money. Nah, take it. <laughs> he's, he's, he's off buying jackets and new suits and all that No, he's not. He must have got that for free. Nah. That's stupid. There's no way he bought that. <laughs> no, no, double or nothing? Go on, take it. Oh, I'm quite happy with 50 bucks. No, take it. Oh, OK. Take it. You're, you're happy get, with it. You bought that colour case. You'll be, okay. you'll be okay. twice as happy with 100 <laughs> <Yeah>. bucks. <laughs> Twice as long as a doctor. To be quite honest, yeah. I'm not worried about the money. <laughs> Just the fact that I'm going to beat him is enough for me. Right. right, OK. Oh. Stevie, Klopp admitted that Liverpool needs another midfielder and would address this in the transfer period. Mm. Regardless of today's results, shouldn't Liverpool go get Bellingham now, since he would fill a need and also to stop any competing teams from signing him? Now, everything we've heard from Germany is that there's no Wouldn't way be a bad Dortmund, move. Dortmund would not entertain that move whatsoever. No. Well, money talks, doesn't it? Well, not, Generally. not necessarily, though. No, not not necessarily, it doesn't, but... Well, but, we've already established <laughs> not necessarily. Right. Are they going to turn you down 200 grand? Sorry? 200 they, grand? Yeah. They're going to turn down. 200 grand, probably, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, no. See, now we know you're talking rubbish. Well, you said grand. Hold on. <laughs> oh, so I did as well. <laughs>
I made two. I made two hundred million. We've got a big offer for you. Two hundred. <laughs> you just wait till you hear this. <laughs> two hundred grand. Uh, no, two hundred million. Uh, no, two hundred million. Oh, goodness me. <laughs> for the Champions League, you can have Manchester City, PSG, or the field to win it all. Which side are you and why, Jan? Well, the Champions League, you can have Manchester yeah. City, PSG, or, or the field to win it all. Yeah. Help me, Dan. That is that So is you can either have Manchester City or PSG, or you can have every other side that's competing in the Champions League. Of course, I will take the rest of the rest. Best, really? Yeah, of course. Yeah. 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 You, you have the, the Harlem Globetrotters, PSG. And Manchester City, you will have some good players, but there's so many good players. Bayern Munich, Real Madrid, who just win the Champions League for fun. So, of course, I will take the rest. What about you, Frank? I have to say that I'm, I'm hesitating, because if you have City <laughs> players and PSG players, and can, you can have a harmony in it, it's not that bad to win the Champions League. And it could be enough, because it's only about details, mentality, and... Um, with the players you have in uh, in hands, yeah, I will get the Man City PSG. Oh. Then I have a question, Dan, yes, to Frank. Yes. Oh. So say say Manchester City got the best team and the favourites in terms of getting Erling Haaland every now. So I will ask Frank then, who will it take from the PSG team to make Manchester City better? And who should then go out to Manchester City? I, I guess you will take Mbappé, so that's too easy. But who? That's a question, eh? That's a hard <laughs> question. I, I didn't, I didn't think through. Well, I think I will put Marquinhos for sure at the, the central defense instead of Stones. I would say. Um, uh, mm -hmm. Hmm. Okay. I try to think really quickly <laughs> about the team. Don't but, worry, uh, Frank. Yeah, for you, sure. You can, you can talk about this later. <laughs> The Vienna call. Okay. The Vienna call later. Even FaceTime. Don't get yourself some pasta. Uh, where are I you call, on this? I'll call you Jan. I'll call you after. <laughs> the field. I'm on, I'm on the you field. You with the field? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the smart bet's the field, isn't it? Well, you're not very good at smart bets, so maybe you want <laughs> to go take the other one. I don't know, but I bet with you. That's a very smart bet. Well, we'll see about that. Uh, Frank, can Fofana be as good as his price tag? Nobody worth a price like that, that as simple as that. You know, you have the offers and the demands and you and you deal with that. And nobody can say I'm worth 85 million. I mean, we had the example with Ari Maguire uh, and, uh, and uh, we see the result. So um, I always say that I, I would never pay that amount of money because it's too much for a young player, but he's a fantastic player and he's going to be, if he's not, uh, if he's not injured, uh, or if he keeps the same frame of mind, frame of mind, sorry, he will be, he will be a fantastic player and a great, great player. But see Virgil van Dijk, two years ago, before his injury, he was the top of the top. Now we are questioning his, uh, his abilities because he got injured, so that would be the same for Fofana. But if he's not injured, if he keeps the same mentality, Fofana is going to have a great future and uh, it doesn't work that because it's not worth that, sorry, because nobody worth that, but he's a fantastic player. Stevie, we talked about this in the show. Last time Liverpool scored 9-0, you scored twice in the yeah. game. What was the atmosphere in the dressing room like afterwards? Oh, we just smiling and <laughs> trying to figure out how we managed to win 9-0. Oh, that's nice. Stevie, winning 9-0 winning and Stevie comes up with Smiling. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Liverpool, you did everything. Yeah. That's Liverpool. That's like every other game. Yeah, I love yeah. that. That's kind of like that. every other game. Yeah. You were like the modern day Arsenal. It's winning. Yeah. Oh, no. No. <laughs> no. 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 I can assure you. I can assure you. We get back in the dressing room. Right. How quick can I get a bath, get my gear on, and get up to the players' bar? Right. And how? I don't think Arsenal players are thinking that. They're too busy. Doing another lap of honour, giving it all this part. Oh, nice. Thank, oh, thanking yeah. the fans. Yeah, I. Go, well, what's wrong that, that? There's nowhere else to go, apart from home. So we, well, so we keep walking, running, running till everybody's gone. Oh. Well, we'll go back in, lads. Well, what are we doing now? Oh, how long would it take you to for the full-time whistle to have a pint in your hand? Oof. <laughs> Two seconds. 20, so, Twenty seconds. Between fifteen and twenty minutes. Right. Yeah. 
player's car. Yeah. <laughs> Jan. <laughs> Considering yes. all three, so just give us, people may not know what the player's bar was, obviously self-explanatory in some ways, yeah. but it's where the families would go as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, and, and in the 80s, most, I mean, it's amazing today, right? So you go to, generally every ground in the Premier League today, Yes. they've got these big fancy suites for the mm -hmm. players, right. they've got another side room for the kids, Yes. they've got nannies. Right. The club actually bring in nannies on yeah. a, on a for game is, day yeah. to watch the kids. And then they've got the food for the kids and ice cream at half time. Yes. And now, in our day, yeah. you got two tickets for the lounge. Right. Two. Okay. So that meant if your wife wanted to come, yes. nobody else could get in. Right. Pretty much. <laughs> oh, the other ticket, the other ticket <laughs> well, was for you. The kids. Hold on, hold on, see. You got the kids, <laughs> right? So the kids need a ticket. No, you get two. You right. get two tickets. You, you, you oh know. no. Anyway, right. And it was a hole. Every pretty much everyone was the same. Right. It was like a little hole in the corner of the stadium yes. where they stuck a, a a horrible little bar thing in where you oh. could just just attach stuff and poor beer that was like oh god all frothy and you, everyone you're sold in yeah. so lovely before in a row oh, oh, every single, 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 single person every single person this is the worst <laughs> place in a football ground <laughs> but I'll be there in 15 minutes flat every, ask Jan right in front every single person would come to Anfield and go oh, I can't go to play what are the players lounge like this imaginary right. all yeah. the players are going to be there and, oh wow yeah. yes. and then yeah. you walk into this old room that's good, the oldest carpet right we got we the 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 settees, the, the seats and the couches and all the couches. Yeah. There was a there was a flood in the candy lounge, so it was <laughs> next door to our lounge. Right. And we got that <laughs> stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we got that stuff. That's brilliant. Oh but, my but goodness. The thing, oh but the thing is, of course, by the players part, because Steve is right, there was not the, always the greatest thing, but, <laughs> but I came back to Middlesbrough after many years away, and I just met this man, and I thought, I know him, but I can't remember. He must have been important for my career. Blah, 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 blah. I can't remember. And at half time, I remember he was the guy standing in the door of the players' lounge because Steve is saying, is right, you've got two tickets, but you have to find a way to get more in. Right. So he was the key man because you will try to get in. I had always a lot of Norwegians over, so I had to get them in. But the players' bar, you missed them because it was a good, that was a good thing. So what, what we used to do was the candy lounge was next door. Okay, because candy was sponsors at candy the Candy sponsors, right? And there was a kitchen adjoining the two. Right. And so what you would do is, depending on uh, who was in the candy lounge, yeah. who, was right. at, uh, who was in the, the door, you get in and then you just siphon them round the back of the kitchen. Brilliant. And back in and through it. the bar. Liverpool. <laughs> well, and then Terry. And then Terry. And then Terry, and then Terry, and then Terry who's on the kitchen. <laughs> just sneak. <laughs> Terry Littlewood who's on I the door. It. He kept looking at the lounge and it's absolutely <laughs> more than he's like, ah, who do all these people, how do all these people get in? <laughs> and so what's the tradition of a Saturday night out with the players? No, no, everybody. Everyone, yeah, you can, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, just, so the just going to the candy lounge. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> great. Time in the kitchen. <laughs> Two days later. Uh, <laughs> no. I, no, I no. love Dan. Dan, I love the way Steve is telling that story. It's like this strategy they have. It's like Churchill in 1940. Oh, it's yeah. like, it's like right. escape. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay, uh, Jan. Considering all three Manchester United signings are playing well and almost cemented their place in the starting eleven, should the United hierarchy just blindly trust? Ten and Hag and acquire all his wish list players irrespective of the price. Well, it's funny how much five days do, isn't it? Uh, I mean, yeah. we, there, was a, there was a time <laughs> six days ago when we thought about uh, Manchester United being the recruitment where they had to play in Ajax or in Holland or play with Steve McLaren in 2020. 12 years ago, FC 20 and Schede, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, but to be fair to Ten Hag, uh, two wins now, it's changed that a bit, but we have to think as well that maybe, maybe Ten Hag has asked the hierarchy at Manchester United to get some other players, uh, we, we don't know about that. Up till now, the recruitments of Manchester United not been the best. But as you're saying, the, the, the three new ones now, and uh, you, you'll find a way that uh, they will establish them well in the team. And But Ten Hag needed that, but just shows you what crisis. The Manchester United crisis, as we talked about six days ago, gone, 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 gone. 
Finally, Frank, what's your take on Kai Havertz at Chelsea? In my opinion, he seems to be focused on the wrong things on the pitch, like starting petty brawls and time-wasting instead of helping out in attack. Well, I saw today, for example, two Havertz. Uh, the first half completely invisible, inexistent, and second half where he was very useful, holding the ball, you know, uh, working hard. So it depends on the, on his mood, let's say. He, he can be the top of the top, but sometimes you, I can agree that you say, what is, it, what is he looking for? He, uh, when he plays against Everton, and every time he plays against Everton, he tries to fight with a huge, um, uh, central defenders, where he knows he wants, it is too light for for that, uh, and uh, but he's still young, and uh, he has an ego. He thinks he can do stuff that he is not able to do, but um, I don't want to criticize him. I mean, he's maybe he might be the only one uh, uh, in the front line who has a, a kind of consistency in his performances. So uh, I will be I will be light in criticism. Uh, beautiful. That is it. Thank you very much. We'll be back uh, tomorrow for more. Both Real Madrid and Barcelona are in action tomorrow. We'll be focusing on uh, both of those games. So be sure to join us.